This is Mr. Anderson for Kellogg Community College, and today we're going to be looking at some selected problems from uh, Math 121, Chapter 7, Section 1, and Chapter 7, Section 2. Uh, we're going to start off today by looking at page 440, and we're going to start off with a, a pretty tricky problem to simplify. It's problem number 53 on that page, and it just asks you to simplify uh, the negative cubic root of negative 125 y cubed. Um, now the first thing we're going to do is think about um, just we're going to kind of ignore the negative on the outside here and just think about what would the cubic root of these two things be. Um, one way to think about it as you can think about it as the cubic root of 125 and the cubic root of y cubed. Now I split this up because the rules of numbers and the rules of exponents are different. Uh, especially when you work with radicals. Uh, the cubic root of a negative 125, um, you can find this on a calculator or see that this is negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. So this is the negative 5 uh, answer to that. Now for exponents, um, you can rewrite them um, like the inside over the index or inside out as we do in class. Um, but this then would simplify down to just y. Uh, another way that we looked at it is how many times does 3 fit into 3, and it fits in once. And so the answer for the cubic root of negative 125 um, and y cubed is negative 5y. Now don't forget we have this negative on the outside of the problem, so um, we're going to basically put that on the outside like so. And so when we finally simplify the problem, it turns out like 5y. Two other problems from this section uh, that wasn't necessarily or emphatically covered in class is to identify in problems 55 and 57 the radicand and the index and this is just a vocabulary check and though I did not spend a lot of time talking about the radicand and the index the radicand is going to be the the um, term or terms underneath the radical and the index is the uh, root um, or I should say, and this is kind of just changing some words around, uh, you can think of it as the degree of the root. So the radicand is going to be the p squared plus 4, and uh, I almost wrote degree there, uh, and the index, the index in this case is 2, because this is a square root. Um, now if we really wanted to go with degree, it would be 1 half, because you know, the square root of anything is the same as the half power. Uh, so, and we've, we've also had some other explanations about that. So degree and index are not um, exactly the same things as you can see. So for problem number 57, uh, the problem is, it uh, throws a lot of subterfuge in there to see if you can get thrown off there. This is x squared y cubed times the fifth root of x over y plus 4. And therefore, your uh, radicand, your radicand is going to be your x over y plus 4, and then your index is uh, 5. <laughs> You're not seeing that I'm holding my 1-year-old at this moment, so things are getting a little tricky here. All right, so now let's go and check out. I'm going to go clear this off here. There are some problems from section uh, 7.2. On page 447, we're going to look at uh, one problem, number 33. And problem number 33 starts off with 25x to the fourth raised to the 3 halves power. Now there are two actual uh, theorems in play right here. One theorem is the product rule that says if we have something under the same root, we can split it up and multiply them. So if it's a monomial, you can split them up under the same root. And we're going to do that right here. We're going to take this 25 and the x to the fourth And see, I will have an easier time handling this. Um, the second part of this problem is that um, uh, we're going to do the power to power rule for the second uh, term here. But, or not second term, but second part of this problem. 
Um, so, so to look at this first one here, I've got 25 to the 3 halves power. Using a calculator, you can quickly find the answer using the caret key uh, to 1.5. But if you don't happen to have that uh, at your disposal, what you can think of this as this is the square root of 25 cubed. So you can rewrite the problem like this if you don't have a calculator, where we have 25 under the square root, um, and then this whole thing will be cubed. Uh, so that means that this is going to be 5 cubed, because the square root of 25 is 5, and 5 cubed is 125, which is part of your answer. Now for this over here, the second rule that's applied is the power to power rule, or if I have a raised to the b power, and that's also raised to the c power, I would have a b times c. So I would just multiply these exponents. So um, multiplying fractions, not a problem. Top times top, bottom times bottom. I get x to the 12 halves, which simplifies to x to the 6th, because 12 divided by 2 is 6. So putting these together, since these are all being multiplied, uh, I got 125x to the 6th power. Okay, so let's look at another question from this section on page 447. Uh, we're going to look at problem number 61. Problem number 61 deals with negative exponents, and there's actually not a lot to do with this problem, but the um, negative exponent rule should be uh, clarified here. So we have 2a to the 3 fourths power. We have b to the negative 1 half power. And we also have c to the 2 thirds power. And this, again, was problem number 61. So let me highlight that there. OK, so what this means is that the negative power um, means that you move this to its opposite place. Um, if it's the numerator, it moves to the denominator. If there's a negative exponent in the denominator, it would get moved to the numerator. So this is our numerator will stay the same with all these other uh, powers here, but our b will move into the denominator. And they're not asking you in this problem to turn these into non-fractional exponents, so we don't have to worry about what the radicals would look like. It just wanted you to move to, you know, which one um, moved to the correct place. When we get to problem number 75 on the same page, we're going to take a look at 10 to the 3 fifths power raised to the 2 fifths power. Now, from our previous problem that we learned that a to the b raised to the c power is just a b times c, we're going to do the same thing here. Top times top, bottom times bottom. So this becomes 10 to the 6 25ths. And that's as far as they want you to go. If we were to actually write this as a radical, um, this would be the 25th root of uh, 10 to the 6th power. And then we would create, we would add six zeros to this because 10 to the sixth power is a million. All right, moving on to our last problem, problem number 93. And problem number 93 here has the eighth root of 2x raised to the sixth power. And it would be best to turn what's inside into a, uh, a rational exponent. I'm sorry, a fractional exponent. So 2x raised to the 1 8th power, and this whole thing would be raised to the 6th power. So you can see that we're going to keep playing with this formula over here. This a to the b, c is a, time, is a to the b times c. So top times top, bottom times bottom. We would have 2x raised to the 6 eighths, but we would want to reduce that, of course, and we would reduce that to 2x raised to the 3 fourths. Now you'll notice in the back of the book that they don't actually leave the problem like this. They want you to put this back into a um, a uh, a um, radical form. So I'm going to create some room over here on the left-hand side, and I'll start off with my 2x to the 3 fourths power. And like I did in problem number 33, I might want to um, think about putting this under the square or the root. All right, so here I have my root. Um, my index is 4, so this is the fourth root. And this is going to be 2x cubed. Now, uh, the, the 2x cubed, um, I can actually, like I did in problem 33, treat this like 2 cubed times x cubed. 
and that would give me the 8 that I have in the back of the book for my answer, and because 2 cubed is 8, and then my x cubed would be just x cubed. So that's how uh, 93 ties into problem 33, and it was good to ask that question ahead of time. So thank you very much for uh, watching, and I uh, again, email me if you have any questions.